Lab Code Agents, we've got Pavel with us with Virtue Desk, and today we'll be touching on how to train your virtual assistants. Dude, you made out a really nice presentation <laughs> for us. We did, yeah, we so, did. Thank you, Tristan, for having us, for having me here, man. Appreciate it. I'm, I'm glad yeah. you're on, and, and we've got a few people on from all over the United States. We got Omaha, Santa Barbara, Orlando, Indiana, Beverly Hills. That's close to me. That's South your Carolina. home turf, yeah. Dude, Germany, Scottsdale, Germany. Oh, who's that? Who's out of Germany? Michael, what's up, Michael? Michael's in Germany. Yeah, yeah. Michael's, a good, Michael's a buddy of mine. I love that guy. Thanks for being on, buddy. Uh, Lenny from Manhattan Beach. And is that is there a recording for how to hire? Yes, there is a recording for how to hire a virtual assistant. Before we get started, let me find that one. Share, on. Yeah, share uh, YouTube. You have a YouTube right there. Yep. Let me grab you that. Share. Lab code agents. And then I'll grab that. We just actually did that. How to hire. No, we did the virtual assistant versus in-house. I mean, for those who want to know about how to hire, I can actually touch base on a few points, just a few minutes on that, just to give you some, um, uh, you know, ideas. No, you know? no, 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 no. Let's, let's have them go to uh, webinar. Let's to go YouTube. I found it. So let there me we go on here and then we'll get going on this part. All right, so if you need the recording for this one or you want to watch part one of this, I'm going to put it in the chat box I just did, and I'll throw it into Facebook as well. Pavel, I'm going to hand this over to you, my friend, so we can get going. All right, sounds good. Let me share my screen very quick, and uh, we're going to do part two. Part two, how do you actually train a VA? Uh, so you went through the process of, uh, let's assume you guys – Went through the process of hiring, through the process of vetting, you happy, uh, you actually found somebody, you found that perfect golden nugget you've been looking for. How do you make sure that person actually can work for you and what do you do? So we've put up together at Virtue Desk uh, the VA training trifecta, which includes video, audio, and written. So uh, we, I mean, you, should probably start uh, recording files. Uh, what what I did personally, I use WhatsApp as a as an app, and I like to record um, audios of my instructions on how to do things. I hate typing stuff, so um, that's what basically what I do. Like I'm driving, I got a revelation, I need to you know record it. So I just put a recording button and record an audio and create a file and send it to the VA. However, you need to have systems in place and written uh, like um, systems uh -huh. in place where you can, um, you know, outline everything that needs to be done. An outline is a great way of, um, of organizing things. I actually le learned it in law school because we, we had to do outlines every day for old cases. And you know the two, Tristan, because you went to law school. I know that. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so outline and basically to the outline, the, the outline, the written outline is basically the uh, the backbone of it, like the bones. Then you put the meat on it, the meat, uh, like the muscles, that's the audio and the video, that's basically all the fun stuff. The um, So that's how we train them. That's how you should be training your VA uh, in the first place uh, by doing the, figuring out the trifecta. I know you, Tristan, have a different way of training your VAs, right? Yeah, I actually, so you record it, you voice record it. I actually I do. Write, it, write it all out based on what I want first. Yeah. So I start with written. And then mm -hmm. what I do is I either make a video for it or I leave it written so that I can put pictures in there or I could be more, I can explain deeper into it. And then once I hire the virtual assistant, they know exactly what process to take. And then more importantly, here's, here's the best part for me. They can add to that document as we grow and as they understand this better than how I'm showing them. That's what I'm saying. The outline, basically, the written outline of, um, of what needs of how your process works. Because again, your company, <clears throat> your real estate company or whatever company you guys run is uh, always work in progress. You can... Uh, change, you modify, you pivot, like recently with the recent pandemic uh, situation, uh, a lot of companies pivoted and um, things are actually run way different than they used to be like, you know, two months ago. So, um, you know, that's why you need to have a good written systems in place, like Tristan said, and I like to add audio and also like to add video. 
Um, so this is just a, how do you train a person? I'm gonna just do that. Let's say you have um, somebody who is um, an admin. So how do you train that? And I pretty much, we've spelled it out right here. So how you can train the admin. Again, you need to create the detailed checklist on daily tasks. Uh, very important to have that routine spelled out. Mm -hmm. uh, if you uh, if you have your admin, um, you know, do your um, MLS input. Mm -hmm. Make sure you check with your MLS if you can add an admin to your MLS roster. Uh, we here at Northwest Multiple Listing Service can actually uh, add a virtual assistant to the MLS roster as a you know non agent uh, like a clerical staff, which means you don't have to share the password for the MLS. That VA will have his or her own password, and uh, they have to go through class online on how to uh, complete the MLS um, input, how to navigate, and how to actually make sure that um, everything is done right. So <clears throat> that's an extra help. I'm sorry, you know, my throat a little bit, yeah. Are you dying? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna get some water? <laughs> I'm good, yeah, I'm good, right. no, uh, yeah. All right, cool, continue. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, you know, the MLS is one thing. Then um, we also, I suggest you teach your VAs on uh, transaction documents updates on how to, let's say, update your client on uh, status of the case of your, not status of the case, status of the transaction. Uh, the way to do it is basically um, create a plan of when the transaction um uh, the, the keystones of the transaction, what happens. And um, I've seen that different brokers just have different way of running it. But the way it usually I see is more uh, preferred by clients is that when um, the VA provides information on a weekly basis to the client about the status of the transaction, of what's going on. And that kind of keeps your seller or buyer in the loop where at the same time you can, um, you know, you can be doing other things. Somebody's anonymous is asking, will we get a copy of this? Yes, anonymous, you can get a copy of this. And at the end, I'll show you how to get a copy of this. Awesome. Yeah. So just to, you know, give you, and how do you train somebody on marketing? Let's say you need somebody who's going to be doing your marketing stuff. I know yep. Tristan, you have a lot of interesting stuff there about marketing. You could probably share better stuff, but <laughs> this is just a list of things that we, um, we've come up with on how our, our VAs are being trained. Yep. Uh, and, um, you know, we use uh, Canva, but some people use Adobe, use Photoshop, um, you know. So this pretty much uh, explains how, you to, how to train. But again, your VA need to have a good eye for marketing, good uh, understanding. And it's so, kind of hard to find gonna, somebody. Yeah. I'm going to steal your screen here. Yeah, yeah, go for it, bro. I'm going to show the same thing I showed last time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you have a killer presentation right there. Yeah, so I'm going to be very specific. We hired somebody, we hired a virtual assistant for YouTube, right? And you can see our YouTube channel has blown up. So has mine because uh, we're doing a great job with it now because I have somebody running it. Uh, we outlined this. And when I mean we is me. So <laughs> I outlined this. I took yeah. time to to write it all out. And you can see I was very meticulous in the steps, like to the point of saying step number one, open up YouTube page with lab code agents credentials, right? Mm -hmm. Number two, click on the top right LCA logo and choose my channel. Look, I didn't want to leave it up to, to them to see what their knowledge was of <laughs> uploading or not uploading information to YouTube. When I interviewed this person, they seemed really, really down to understanding everything about YouTube, but I still didn't want to risk it. So uh, what I did is I outlined this from every step on to getting a little bit more detailed, as you can see, and then getting a little harder into it, going to steps they need to be taking here, and then tags. And then now they're growing it and making it better and, and explaining things to me that I didn't even know on YouTube, which is beautiful because that's the where, that's where I want to be, right? I want to yeah. create this outline. And then at the end, I want them to add more stuff to it. Like, dude, I didn't even know about the bell. 
I didn't oh, know you got to have it. Yeah. The bell is. Yeah. I didn't know I was supposed to tell people to click on the damn bell so that my, my video then shows up in their email every day. But yep. what happens is you create this outline, however you want to create it. You can be like Pavel voice it, right? Mm-hmm. You can record it like we're doing right now, or I love to write it. And that's just me, but what, what you can do. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can write it or you can like, let's say, uh, here's the thing. I'm more of a, like, um, <clears throat> high D personality. When I drive, I have something come up in my mind. I don't I have no way of writing it down. So what I do, I record an audio of my thoughts and send the file to my VA and she can put it on paper. You know, I, I like that. I, I think I'm going to yeah. start doing that, dude. That's such a good idea. Yeah. I, yeah. What I do with, with one of my virtual assistants is actually, uh, I just text her. I voice text her. Mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, can you remind me to do this? Hey, can you add this over here, please? Or, hey, can you do this? Because I, I, or else I'll forget when my calendar's all over the place. Exactly. A question from, from Thomas. And Thomas, I want to answer this so everybody hears it because it's a question that, that uh, is a good question. Thomas is saying, Tristan, are all your VAs from the Philippines or are you using from other areas of the world? Thomas, right now, all of my virtual assistants are from the Philippines. Um, and at one point I did have them spread out a little bit. I had one from Pakistan, uh, one from Bangladesh. And then, uh, I also had one from the United States, which is cool. Uh, it was just too, it was too pricey for me. So I shifted over to, to all from the Philippines. And then what I did is I got one head virtual assistant to help me out with the rest of the virtual assistants that we have now so that she's my go-to person. And I know that she's got the right system. She understands the world that I come from, the tech world, right? Mm-hmm. That she can then express our concerns and organizations to everything, everybody else that's involved. So that's how we run it. Exactly. And again, the Philippines, uh, we actually, uh, for my other company, we've looked for uh, people outsourced in different parts of the world. Uh, for different tasks, specifically for more of a task, uh, more of a tech people, uh, the developers, uh, like software developers, we've hired in Russia, Ukraine, India. Uh, but the main problem usually is the language. Regardless, uh, you know, how well they know it, there's still like accent going on. And um, frankly, I mean, thankfully, I speak Russian myself, so I can communicate with the developers in Russia and Ukraine. But, um, you know, if somebody's looking for uh, more of a menial tasks or admin, uh, Philippines is a better way to go because of the English language. Yeah. And uh, it's more of a, how do you say, more of a westernized uh, mentality. Mm-hmm. Uh, because from all Asian countries, Philippines, I think, is the only country I know that has more of that uh, Western influence because from our uh, GIs when they used to be there and uh, exposure to the Western culture. So that kind of helps uh, with a lot of things. Um, yeah, you know, I agree. But, I agree. Yeah. Let me touch on a couple of things here that I have yeah. on the chat box and some questions and then we'll go back to your slide. Sure. Uh, let's start with Pinky. Uh, oh, Ted, is the YouTube list available anywhere? You know, I'll, I'll probably make it available uh, next week on my newsletter. If you're part of a brilliant tribe, uh, I'll, I'll send it out through there. Let me just grab that link. And then Pinky's saying, can you, oh, same thing with the YouTube, YouTube list. Okay, I'll make it available through a brilliant tribe. Uh, Paula said, Pavel, this one's for you. Okay. She started with your company, Virtue mm-hmm. Death, uh, mm-hmm. two, two weeks ago. So. Oh, good. Welcome, welcome aboard. I love that. So yeah. uh, welcome aboard, Paula. Let me see another YouTube one. Thanks, Pinky. I'll post it up. Um, where did where did I find her? I found her on Virtue Desk. Actually, that's why we're doing this with Paula. <laughs> uh, we have our virtual all of our virtual assistants, except for one, are from Virtue Desk. So they're they're really good, and then we just keep on going there. So and you just Paula. had you just got uh, uh, Gab uh, Gabriel yeah, we picked up another person for. Uh, yeah. Our new division of LCA, it's um, LCA Elements, which should be coming out in July. But what we do to, good. <laughs> is, yeah, Gab is good. So what yeah. we just basically is I reach out to, let's say, Virtue Desk, and I say, hey, Pavel, I need this person. I need a graphics designer, and I need them now. Can you, can you find me two or three that we can interview? So same thing with video. Pavel, I need somebody who can edit. He finds two, three people for me. Pavel, I need somebody who can do my transactions for me. I need an admin or I need this or that. Um, That's what I typically do. 
uh, with them. And let me, let me put up the link, guys, to the newsletter. Go ahead and sign up for the newsletter. Next week, I'll throw that YouTube. The tribe. I'm getting yeah. those emails, bro. <laughs> the Tribe, yeah, I've yeah. got, got 50,000 people on it. So yeah, it's a, it's a really good one. Then let me go to the next questions. Uh, I'm not a member of the Brilliant Tribe. Ah, got it. Just put up the link there, guys. It's on the chat box. It's a bit.ly link. Just sign up. Pam says, where do you get these VAs and how much do you pay? Uh, I'll, I'll answer two more questions and then we'll go back to your slides. Uh, what do you pay, Pavel? I know you could do part-time or full-time. What's that? Um, part-time, um, if it's an admin, um, it's um, part-time 960 an hour. If it's a uh, full-time, 860 an hour. I'm going to share, share the link. Got it. And then a question about English. It hasn't been a challenge for me. If it's really important to <laughs> you, what you need to do is when you're interviewing these two or three, because they line up two or three or four for you, you need to yeah. talk to them. And like I do, I normally just talk to them and I say, hey, have you seen any movies lately? What do you do for fun? Uh, what social media platform do you like? And I like to engage with them just with regular talk. So, yeah. I, so I can just hear how they talk and, and the hobbies that they have. Uh, that's important to me because then I can understand, do they, do they grasp the knowledge of the English language better than others, right? And if that's important to you, it is. Yeah. That's a question. So uh, I know for a lot of people it is. For most of the people it is for me too, but guess what? My editor for YouTube doesn't speak English that great. And I don't, I don't really care because his graphics and his, his <laughs> stuff on YouTube is insane. I know, right? Yeah. Right? So I don't Seriously. care that much. But if you're going to be talking to the rest of my team, if you're going to be engaged with, with like Pavel, uh, then you know, you got you to speak English well. So yeah, uh, it just depends on what you need them for. Pavel, back to you. Let's go back to the awesome slides that you were having. Yeah. And as far as English, let me just touch base so people know. Uh, Philippines is a major outsource hub for Fortune 500 companies. Um, they have people, they have call centers for Chase, American Express, Bank of America, Capital One. Uh, they have IT Park. Um, it's called IT Park in Cebu, where it's all for major banks, like huge uh, park of buildings where you see the names Bank of America, Chase, Comcast, and you walk around, you feel like you're in the United States, but this is actually all support centers for all those major Fortune 500 companies. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. do hire people from those call centers. And when I was there, what I actually did, I'll tell you, I went to Starbucks, sat and just, I saw people hanging out because they go from on their lunch break, just approach and talk to them, you know, say, hey, you know, <laughs> you guys want to get another job? Yeah. <laughs> I love that, dude. Yeah. I love that. Uh um, Pricing U.S. US uh, dollars, $9.50 yes. an hour if you get them a part-time, right? Admin. Uh, there's different prices for it. Pavel, are full-time VAs that are proficient in WordPress, Adobe, any more expensive than any other $8.64? Uh, they probably would be a little bit more. Um, you know, because of the, you know, special skills they have, specifically if it's a WordPress, it requires a little bit more tacky, but uh, we can, we can probably get a, it's, it's not going to be more than 10 bucks an hour. I'll, 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 I'll tell you that. Well, yeah. also Ted, here one thing, and then you can show your slides. Sorry, yeah. I keep on holding you back, dude. Uh, Ted, there's something that, that I learned over the last 11 years of using a virtual assistant. And that's if I want to get the best in class, then I'm going to be paying more for it, but still significantly less than if I was going here in the United States and hiring somebody. So if I'm going to hire the best marketing person, I'm going to go to Pavel and say, Pavel, I want you to find me the best Rockstar. marketing person <laughs> you've ever seen in your entire life. I want him to have a degree in marketing, right? I want him to have this, this, and this. And I'll pay them whatever, whatever the wage is for somebody like that in the Philippines. And chances are, if you go and find them, you're going to be paying anywhere between $12 to $15 an hour if they're like amazing rock stars like you've never seen before. And here, you'd have to be paying somebody like that anywhere between $60 to $100,000 a year, which is significantly less than what you're paying if you got yeah, absolutely i mean basically we've run the map uh the math and uh it's probably going to be about you know for a va for a full-time va you 
probably going to cost about 17, 18,000 a year, not more than 20. Uh, where if you were to hire somebody, let's say in the US for that, you're looking at about, let's say hourly is one thing, but don't forget when you, when you hire somebody hourly, you have to also pay FICA tax, you have to pay uh, uh, payroll tax, you have to provide infrastructure. So you're looking at about, you know, probably about $60,000 a year savings. You know, that's very significant for $60,000 a year. Imagine what, what actually it can do to your marketing, you know. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Very true, my friend. All right, go back to your slides. It's like I we would... have a question from Samantha. Can they teach me to provide them with videos and digital content that they will need to produce the social media marketing and email? Ah, okay. So at that point, Samantha, if you want somebody to, to teach you that, you'd have to go to Pavel and say, hey, Pavel, I need somebody that, that is a master on TikTok, master of Facebook and Instagram, and I need for them to be so, so amazing that they could actually show me how to do this stuff and yeah. not post, not just post for me. Yeah. So yeah, we, they could totally we, we, we had, we had people do that. We have uh, actually some VA teach our clients how to use uh, TikTok. So, um, but some agents can still figure out how to use TikTok. And for some of them, it's pretty, you know, like overwhelming the TikTok. So with, I know some the VA is what they do. They post a TikTok, agent records a video, sends it to VA, VA edits it, you know, makes it funny, makes it nice and posts it on their TikTok. So um, agent can actually promote it. And yeah, we've, we've had it before, especially when the, uh, the pandemic hit. And I'll tell you the story when the pandemic hit in uh, March, uh, we had uh, one of, one of the uh, big clients we have, they're, uh, you know, they're spending about a million dollars a month on Facebook ads. So they, they cut down that uh, uh, million dollars a month uh, budget on mm -hmm. Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, but they actually invested more in TikTok as far as like the content on TikTok. And they're generating leads off of TikTok, real estate leads. Yeah, I'm seeing that. I'm seeing that more and more, man. Yeah. Uh, Instagram and TikTok, I think those are the go-to. Mm -hmm. Those are the go-to right now. And Facebook's doing well, but I've noticed there's been a shift a little bit uh, and nobody's paying attention to Google as much anymore when it comes to real estate leads and Correct. There's some opportunities, uh, man. I, I definitely see that. But look, guys, if you're, if you're interested in hiring somebody that can right. run your social media, or if you want to learn more about it, just um, he'll, he'll give you a slide. And also, if you, I'm going to plug myself here, Pavel. All right. If you want to learn about TikTok, I made a great video for Instagram for beginners and I'll drop it into the chat box right now. All right. Do it. There. All right. Back to you, Pavel. Let's Back go. Back to me. All right. So um, as we've, we've talked how you can train marketing, admin, and uh, guys, if you missed that, if you need the slides, I will provide you um, um, a number where you can text and you'll be able to get those slides, okay? So they are gonna be available and I promised we'll get them to you today after the webinar. So you don't have to write it down or take screenshots, okay? So how you train somebody to be an amazing transaction coordinator. Um, again, you know, you need to explain to VA how to write and update offers. Um, I actually have an agent in the brokerage who doesn't write any offers at all. The guy sends, sells multi-million dollar homes, but he never writes up an offer or touches any kind of paperwork. He's teaching, he's, he taught his VA how to do it. At the end, when he's on, uh, what, what he does, he's showing a house. He calls VA on uh, either Skype or anything or dictates the terms of the offer. So she goes into his MLS, types it up, mm -hmm. sends it to him for review. He reviews it, sends it to a client, boom. But you need to basically spend some time um, and explain for, because even though your VA may have prior training on, uh, on TC work, they're different from state to state. Even in the state of California, I'm sure there are different MLSs and where uh, the forms may be different. So it's a good idea to spend some time on educating on how to be, how to actually navigate through your state specific forms. Um, so, 
explain what what you know what the offers are. They know basic stuff. Uh, most of them, uh, they know like what earnest money. They know what inspection is. The but uh, state specific forms need to be probably explained better terms. Uh, thankfully, our MLS has a video recorded on how to do it, how to use a transaction desk, how to use AuthentiSign. So uh, VAs who actually uh, what what VAs at Virtue Desk. We provide them that those videos, and when they, that that's what they actually trained on. They trained on uh, Northwest multiple listing services uh, videos on how to do it. But let's say you uh, you are an agent in Virginia or California or New York, it's totally different. So you need to spend some time on um, you know teaching the forms around. Um, so. You need to provide a VA information about lenders, escrow title companies, who you actually usually work with. Uh, that way, when you are, um, you know, let's say putting a deal together, uh, the VA already knows who the who's going to be the lender, uh, who's going to be the escrow company or title company, so they can contact them on your behalf and pretty much open escrow. They can uh, request title, um, stuff like this. That's what needs to be done. Uh, Make sure that you give access to or management or calendar some sort of calendar management going on. It either can be a dot loop or either can be um, Google's uh, calendar. I don't care what it you have, but some sort of um, understanding of a upcoming deadlines and the calendar and obviously that you need to when you do the onboarding you need to explain how you manage your appointments how you manage your uh, calendar and how you manage the deadlines for transaction uh, the best way to do it again when you train um, you explain that each time uh, the timeline for each event and the transaction let's say the inspection timeline is within a 10 days uh, if you're in an attorney state then what's the attorney review time gonna be uh, what's the procedure for that? Basically spelling out, you know, if this happens on that date, then that happens on that date. Why do you need to have it? Because when the VA gets your contract with your TC, uh, she can mark in the calendar the deadlines for completion of each task. Yeah. And that obviously makes your life easier and hers, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So um, also explain that VA needs to provide the information to your broker. Um, you know, any contract that you have would need to be sent out to your broker for re review. If the broker makes any kind of, um, uh, you know, requests or questions anything, uh, VA may be able to track down what, what usually, because I also run a brokerage, just a side note, I also run a brokerage in Seattle and our uh, agents, uh, when they use a VA uh, and sometimes, what what happens when they upload the documents in the broker mint and I go review the transactions, I type a note there that let's say missing initial and um, their transaction coordinator picks it up and hunts down that initial from whatever party needs needs to initial it. So Got the it. agent is basically not interrupted in this sense. Mm. Uh, looks like we have some questions there, right? Yeah, let's do them. Let's grab some questions, buddy. Yeah. You have both VA and admin assistant. Uh, that's number one. VA is a v virtual assistant. Um, so it can be anybody who's working virtually as a virtual assistant. So a transaction coordinator, ISA, um, you know, administrator. Yes, this, this is all uh, subsections of a, what a VA is. VA is a virtual assistant. Yeah. All right, cool. Next question. Uh, if, if I hire a virtual assistant on a regular basis, is this person dedicated to me? Yes, it is. Yes, this person will be dedicated to you. Uh, if you hire somebody for a full time, this person is going to be 100% working for you. If you hire somebody for a part time, let's say 20 hours a week, uh, that person may be also uh, working for another uh, agent for 20 hours a week. So that person is uh, fully employed, uh, full, have a full time employment. Uh, however, would we run into some obstacles? Let's say you hire a VA for a part time, and then that VA also works for another part client part-time, but then you decide to employ your VA for full-time, then you run into the problem, not exactly a problem, but um, an obstacle how to navigate because you know now your VA is booked up eight hours a day. So sometimes what we do, we allow some VAs, if they can uh, provide a waiver that they can work 12 hours a day, they can. Some do, but some decide not to. So that could be an obstacle. So if you decide 
that you need somebody for a full time, I suggest you do that instead of booking them for a part time for now and then hoping to upgrade it to a full time. But the problem may be in the future that VA may not be available for a full time. That could be one of those problems. Yeah, I love that. And that I experienced super quickly when I hired a virtual assistant that ended up being amazing. Uh, after I fired two, by the way, Pavel, it wasn't the first one I hired. That was great. Okay. But, you know, the cool thing is the two were like, mm, it ain't happening. On um, the third one, she's, she's still with me after five years and she runs, she's like, she runs part of a whole operation and she handles a whole bunch of other VAs. So she's amazing. I love her. I can't do business without her. Um, her name's Sandra, by the way. Oh, but, nice. <laughs> I love her. She's awesome. And let's see, Michael's got, Pavel, if I hire a VA on a regular basis, got it. That was the answer. Uh, he also says, and what happened if the VA gets sick, Pavel? Life happens. Uh, you know, if VA gets sick, let's say if it's just, a, you know, maybe like a flu or cold couple of days, uh, we can, you know, she can do later a makeup shift later on, but it's the same thing. Like your um, when your uh, in-house assistant gets sick at the office, you know, uh, if it's more of a s serious situation where we had somebody who was diagnosed with cancer and uh, she needed to go through treatment, and obviously we provided the replacement VA. So that's another thing. If you let's say you know hire VA from us, since we already have all your systems and processes already. Uh, you know, lined up, we can easily uh, provide a replacement uh, who will take over. And, you know, you may want to do some up training, but not as much as extensively if you were to go and look on your own. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but life happens. It's not robots. They, they do get sick, you know. Yeah, it's part of it. Yeah. But yeah. the cool thing is when they get sick, you don't pay for when they're, when they're not working. Exactly. Exactly. You only pay for the hours, uh, for the hours that are uh, that they are working. And uh, we have a, our proprietary software that we've built that you will be able to see the time when they logged in, when they logged out, when they took a break, when they uh, went on idle, and you can see the screenshots every I think like two minutes. This system takes a you know screenshot of their screen of their computer screen, so you'll be able to see what she's actually working on or not working for that matter. Yeah. All right, well, then. well let's yeah. go back to your slide. What's uh what's on the next slide there, man? Okay, well I people ask me how much how how long it usually takes to onboard somebody uh, or to train. And we've estimated it. I mean, from if you, let's say, to hire somebody on your own, you're going to spend about 80 hours on actually training and onboarding somebody, depending on the tasks. And what Virtudesk does, we, uh, you know, we basically consume that time, which means we do the uh, training because our training uh, about a week for admin and about, uh, I think, about 10 working days for um, uh, the transaction coordinator and executive virtual assistant, which is a little bit more expensive, but again, they actually come with more training. So an average about 80 hours plus if you figure out you need to, how much time you need to onboard somebody. So if you are, let's say, go and hire somebody on your own, you need to estimate about, estimate about 80 hours of training and onboarding. So two weeks, that person is not going to be able to provide any work, any meaningful work for you. Just keep Got that it. in mind. Mm -hmm. You know, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, so if you go to Virtual Desk, we make it easy. And, um, you know, because what, what happens, we, we receive about, um, usually right now, especially during the pandemic, we receive about 500 resumes a day, uh, which is crazy, crazy amount of people out of work. So that's how uh, we've been able to hire amazing virtual assistants lately because people people need work and some other people have been dropping their really good ones so exactly we, we yeah lucky. yeah but the thing is like those people who drop there because of the you know the finances they have to drop their good good vas and they've been already picked up by somebody else now there's those people coming back to us and say can i have my back old va back and unfortunately they may not be available 
they've been picked up by me. <laughs> Actually, you're right. I picked up you're right. So. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we had people asking, can I get this person back? And unfortunately, it's not going to happen. So we need to provide somebody else. And we have to go back to square one and training that person, you know. So that's, that's one of those things, you know. You need to con con consider that. Looks like yeah. we have more. Uh, All right, let's yeah. go to the next slide because the next slide gives me the good stuff. Oh, this is like if they want to get a. Um... Yeah, if they want to get the slides and they want to get the. You also have a. Um, one thing that it was requesting, like a system for processing the the VAs. You have that too. You sent it out last time, didn't you? Um, what are you talking about? So if I need like a step-by-step -step process on, on maybe like outlining how to train, how to train my VAs, you kind of have like a step-by-step -step too. You showed it to us last time when we were how to hire and then how to train. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Everybody gets, everybody gets what you're looking at right now. So just go back <laughs> to that slide. Yeah. Well, um, if you guys need it, I'll be more than happy to provide it to you. So you can, you know, you can, you can send me a quick DM. Yeah. Perfect. And then we yeah. can just, and can you like show me that texting number again. So people can text. Yeah. Uh, they can text uh, right here. Love it. It looks like we have some questions here too. Um, All right, cool. Karen says uh, she's used Fiverr before and she's used them for graphics uh, agents. Do you recommend, do I recommend Fiverr? Uh, VAs, uh, I've only used, so I've used Fiverr for, for a while and I use them for just like one-off projects. I found that their VAs from the ones that I was using uh, weren't, weren't as qualified to give me what I needed because the only reason, Karen, was they weren't trained specifically for what I wanted. And that's, that was the difference here. These understand the real estate world, right, through Virtue Desk because Pavel is a real estate agent, he's an attorney, and he tested them out on himself first uh, before he created this company. And that's why I gravitate to somebody that understands the real estate world more. No, that's the only reason. And it uh, looks like we have uh, Stephanie's asking, what area good questions to ask when interviewing potential virtual assistants, tip on what to look for? And um, we have specifically come up with a list of what to look for when you interview people. So if you text to that leverage, uh, if you text leverage to 31996, uh, you will receive copies of the slide, which has uh, interview tips on how to get things, uh, what to ask. And um, also uh, Chris Morton is asking about the list of duties assistants can do virtually or typical things your VA do. Uh, Chris, reach out to me and I will send you um, a slideshow of uh, with a list of duties. I, I have it, I just need to find it right here, but I'll send it to you, just reach out to me. Uh, Pinky's asking, should it be ideal to hire two part-time VEs or one full-time VE? Uh, depending on your finances, uh, you, can do, you can do either or. Um, Wait, I think I understand her question actually. All right, so it depends on what you want. If you want to split up and say, okay, I'm going to hire one VA that's trained really well on social media and marketing, and then one VA that's kind of going to handle my transactions for my business, like real estate, then, then Pavel, don't you think we could do like two VAs at that point? Because if they're, if they're yeah. trained specifically for those, those things, I'd want to split it up. Yeah, we have people who have five or six VAs actually. Okay, well, yeah, like yeah. us, right? We've got 11. So. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, you know, you can have basically whatever your budget allows you. But again, you know, don't look at it like, oh, then I, this is more of a li liability. No, this is where you actually to grow your business. That's how you do it. You know, that's the key. Yeah. Key. All right. Back to you, Pavel. Uh, Pinky's asking what should be first step for hiring a VA? Uh, Pinky, if you want to reach out to Virtual Desk, uh, we'll be happy to speak with you and uh, get you to uh, to interview some of the VAs. Um, you got let me, it. You know, I'll show the website here, Pinky, so you can so you can reach out. Um, if anybody again wants the copies of the slides, I'd be more than happy to share them. Uh, when you manage your VA. I don't know. I don't think I shared that one, but 
when you, when, what to do with, I mean, there's some tips on how do you manage them? You know, uh, you need to have scheduled daily check-ins um, with them. Uh, some of them, uh, some clients require them daily uh, start of day report and end of day report. I personally don't like start of day re report because by nature, uh, in my, by my, uh, you know, you know, but yeah, basically by, by D, my, my DNA, I consider myself like a more of like a half time, half time coach in an essence that I, I, I look at things, how they're going and I adjust in the, in the midday of what, you know, what needs to be done. Uh, so if it makes sense in the, in the football t t terminology. Uh, so schedule daily check-ins. It's important because you actually are on the same page as far as what's going on. Uh, use Skype or Slack, or you can use uh, Ring Central Glip. For my team, we use Glip. Um, it's a app by uh, Ring Central. Um, you you also require weekly re report on things that are, that that are done and that things that need to be done. Um, also coordinate what tasks need priority and uh, how much are you supposed to be spending on each task? For my other tech project that we have going on, we're working with a developer that he's in Eastern Europe and uh, we determined as far as how much each project, each task is supposed to take as far as the time-wise. So that kind of gives you an estimation, um, you know, what you're expecting. If, he, if your VA is taking too much time on, let's say your, the task doesn't, shouldn't take more than half an hour and if your VA is taking it, two hours to complete, that's you know not much leverage of your time there and money. So you need to kind of give an expectation of what you expect. Um, you know, so also uh, make check-ins and find out if there's any problems and challenges that they have uh, and uh, that you have a feedback from whatever needs to be done. You know, as yeah. far as the tools, um, you know, for you know for managing the, the outsource staff, you, again, this is just a list of tools that we, Su suggest again, we don't endorse any specific company here. Uh, just providing you what's what's available out there, and those companies are competitions with with each other, so there's no endorsement, obviously. Uh, but this is what we use: we use Skype, we use Zoom, like we use right now, Slack, um, appear in. Uh, as far as the project management tools, Trello is the best. Asana, mm -hmm. I know Monday, it's not on the list, but um, it's there. And as far as the file sharing. Uh, some people use Google Drive. Some people use Dropbox. I we use both. Um, we don't use LastPass, but just to give you um, ideas as far as um, what what's what's out there. Yeah, you hit them up. I, we use Trello. We still use Trello. Yeah. So, uh, how do you deal with the different time zones? That is a very good question. Uh, it's fifteen hour time zone with Seattle. I'm in Seattle area. Um, you know, uh, but they work on, uh, on, on your time zone. Uh, right. They work at night. And interesting things, when I first came to the Philippines, that was uh, 2012. And I ended up in an area where major outsourced companies have their offices there. But I, I arrived at night. And the funny thing, I see a lot of people, like 2 o'clock in the morning, a lot of people out there. And I'm asking my cab driver, what's, what's going on? He's like, oh, they're all going for lunch. It's like, what do you mean? And he said, oh, they all work for the call centers and it's lunchtime for them right now. That's why they're all out for lunch at two, three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. All the cafes are open because they used to working on um, at, at night, their graveyard shifts uh, because they work on American time. So it's not even an issue. And again, if you're looking for a VA by yourself, um, let's say you go to Fiverr or you go to um, any of the, you know, uh, Philip online jobs .ph, whatever you find a VA, let's say great, perfect. Um, you know, some may not be used to working on graveyard shift. And this should be one of the questions you ask, uh, because I'm right now trying to communicate with one person in the Philippines. She's not part of virtual desk, but I'm, um, you know, uh, but she has a hard time waking up on my time. So, but She's not going to be working for us. I'm actually communicating in a d different matter with her. Michael is asking, Pavel, do you offer VA with German language as well? Uh, no, we don't. They're all in the Philippines, unless somebody speaks German, but I cannot guarantee it. You know. Yeah. Stephen uh, Lewis, can a TC be hired on a per transaction basis? Uh, no, they all work hourly, not per transaction. However, 
uh, what you can do, you can, let's say if you're a brokerage and uh, you have agents and you're charging your agents for TC per transaction. Let's say you're a brokerage or a team lead and one of the value props you provide to your agents is a transaction coordinator. You can have hourly transaction coordinator and charge, charge your agents per transaction, yep. which will actually provide you more revenue. Just keep that in mind. No, that's a great idea. That's what I do. <laughs> I love it. All right, guys. Can you yeah. put up? Can you? Uh, all right, you you got it. So, guys, text leverage just the word leverage by itself without any signature, without your name, without anything like that, to three one nine nine six, and you should be getting the slides and a, a few other things there. And if you want to sign up for Virtue Desk, what's the website, Pavel? Uh, MyVirtuDesk.com. MyVirtuDesk.com. That was easy. There. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, you'll be contacted by one of our um, account reps. Uh, most likely it's going to be James. He is here at the office in Seattle and he'll walk you through on um, what to, on how to get things done. Um, what the, the process usually, if you are signing up for Virtue Desk, um, you sign the agreement with us and we, our on, onboarding team contacts you for a preference call. At that point, they're going to figure out what kind of person you need. Uh, either you prefer male, female, what kind of skills, and uh, the preferred time for the interviews. Uh, what's going to happen then, they will send you profiles of uh, VAs that are, you know, fit your requirement. So it's going to be like four, five, six people, and uh, there's going to be time slots for the interview on Zoom or Skype. And you interview, and basically you pick who you want. Um, just one of this thing I wanted to pinpoint we had um we had a person who signed up with us and that person decided to interview after each interview of the va that person decided to call past clients of that va and, and uh verify um or like past employers let's say that va worked at a different company before guys we've done this work already for you so basically it's redundant in essence. I understand your desire to verify that. Mm -hmm. That's perfectly fine, but it's redundancy because we already have done this job for you. Uh, you more than, we, we more than, I mean, we're more than happy to provide you the information of a past client of the VA if that past client agrees to their information being released. Um, we respect everybody's privacy. That's why we cannot just simply give you the person's information without their prior consent. And the same courtesy will be extended to you. Uh, but, you know, it's just going to take a little bit longer to for you to make the decision. But again, I personally, myself, I when I interview people, I make the decision right there on the spot whether I want it or not. You know, again, I, I you know, I, I hire quick and I fire faster. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's the important part, buddy. I love yeah. That. Yeah. Well, that's what I did the first few times too when I hired a few VAs. You, you have yeah. to be sure that if it doesn't fit, you just, you let them go and then you find one that matches what exactly, you're Exactly, yeah. For. Don't be don't be afraid to do that quickly. Exactly. We have, looks like we have some questions from Karen. Uh, do they have access to your personal email box or did they, they create a separate email box for them to use? Good question, Karen. I actually, um, yes and no. And I'll explain to you. Uh, my virtual assistant has uh, a personal email box for her, so she can use it, and she goes, you know, basically. And um, one of them actually has uh, access to my, not my personal, but my business email because uh, she cleans up the uh, spam I receive, and anything that requires my personal attention, she kind of highlights it that I, you know, I look at it. Yes. Also to the calendar, it's important to have. Uh, uh, if if you let's say if you're hiring an ISA or somebody who's managing your calendar, make sure you provide them access to your calendar. That way they can uh, manage it, and you get notifications as far as upcoming meetings. You know, um, do you have them sign some type of agreement where they will not share if they're exposed to sensitive information like contacts list, etc.? Yes, uh, they are vetted through the uh, rigorous background check process, uh, which is on the level of it's called NBI in the Philippines. It's National Bureau of Investigation. It's basically the FBI grade. Uh, they are cleared, and uh, they know that if there's going to be a misconduct, they can be reported to this uh, NBI 
which means they can be blacklisted for any potential employment and they will not do, do this. It's one thing. Another one, we actually, we are a U.S. company uh, here in, and we are located here in the state of Washington. We are fully insured for this type of occurrences. So, uh, you know, that's again, one of the uh, benefits when you hire a company like Virtudesk is, you know, we are here in the States and we have extra protection layer because we are uh, incorporated both in the Philippines and here in the state of Washington. You know, we can go after the, and, and let's say if you hire somebody by yourself on Fiverr or onlinejobs.ph, well, your information, as long as your credit card information can be gone and you don't know where it's going. When you're working with us, uh, we are here. We, you know, we're stateside, and um, we provide extra security layer to your information. Um, is there a yearly contract that is required? Uh, no, we don't have a yearly contract. The minimum contract is 90 days uh, because that's what usually, you know, we kind of learn uh, from experience that it takes about. Uh, you know, 90 days for somebody to be molded into your culture, into your office. So 90 days is usually what we require, you know. Pavel, do you help with their resumes? I received five and three of them ex except for the education. Uh, the same except for the education I'm interviewing tomorrow, Aaron Baxby. Aaron, I think uh, our team helps them with their resumes, uh, but I don't personally handle that, no. Um, Selena is asking with the, Within 90 days, can we switch VA if, we, if they assign VA? Yes, if they assign VA does not work. Yes, Selena, you can switch, uh, you can switch the VA. You can basically request the replacement and um, can be done easily. There's no extra cost involved in switching a VA. And we have people who've done it before, yeah. And uh, tip to Aaron. Aaron, um, when you look at resumes, I understand uh, in the US, uh, people look at experience uh, and that, Philippines, they have a different way of writing resumes and we've done our best uh, as far as educating them on how to uh, tailor resumes to the American US standard. Like in the resumes in the Philippines, they even put sometimes, you know, their uh, marital status, they put how many kids they have. Mm -hmm. uh, they put, I mean, I've seen some of them putting their weight and height in their resume. Oh, wow. Along that with I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, which would be a big no-no in the United States. So we you know, we've, so yeah, we have to, so we spoke with them about that, you know, so, but again, sometimes you may get something like that. Just don't be surprised. It's part of the culture. Makes sense, dude. Yeah. Makes sense. Those are yeah. a lot of great, I think this is the most questions we've gotten, dude. I know, right? Yeah. I'm <laughs> yeah. Them up. All right. Well, anything you want to leave us with my friend? There's still a, a, a lot of other questions here, but. Um, let's say, do you have them? Uh, do you do a KPA or can we do this? What's KPA? Uh, KPA? KPA is um, is it kind of like a disk profile, but yes. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Disk profile. They do disk profile. Yes, exactly. Uh, do your VA works from home or an office setting? Yes, they all work from home. Uh, and again, as I said, we have um, a software, timely software that, um, you know, you can use to track them. Yep. Agreed, man. Yeah. All right. Pavel, anything you want to add here in closing? Anything that, that we should know here that, that you think is important that we may have missed? Well, um, during basically we live in this interesting time right now, guys. And um, all of us started to work from home, learn how to work from home. Uh, Virtue Desk has been working from home for, for years now. Uh, and we have experience, we have the knowledge, and it's not unusual to us to do it. So our VAs work from home and we have the infrastructure to allow them to work from home, uh, which, you know, and we see more people, more and more people actually right now going towards the switching to, towards the VA uh, because of our expertise of working from home. And, um, you know, and also because we, you know, we know how to do it. Uh, we have questions from Jusu Kim. What is the starting fee for you to find a VA? Uh, go to our website, Jusu, uh, but we have a LCE special. It's $175. It's a setup fee. Uh, John Mahoney is asking, why should we hire your services over any other out there? Uh, because we're the best. We have a uh, great infrastructure. We have great tr training. 
And um, we are flexible with our pricing plans uh, where some of our competitors may not be so flexible, but sh shop around, shop around and uh, see what you like, you know? Yeah, I'll, I'll add to that. I think there's two things that come to mind for me personally. Yeah. Uh, number one is I, I love the way you train your virtual assistants. That's important to me, the, guy, the way you guys do it. The back end is beautiful, easy to use. And you guys train them well for the systems that we have as real estate agents. Number two is you actually offer part-time. Yeah, we do. a lot of other people do. So that, that actually hits a sweet spot for a lot of agents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have the VA set up a drip campaigns and give them access to your leads and contacts? Yes. Uh, we use Infusionsoft and we also use the uh, KV Core and, um, for the for the brokerage and they they do that yeah you can easily set it up for the drip the drip campaigns and they actually train very good on that so uh you can have your VA you know do drip campaigns in the crm in your crm and the question to you when the recording will be available <laughs> uh, um you know what's what, up with the t-shirts bro <laughs> like my t-shirt oh uh, you gotta have the t-shirt yes the webinar is being recorded remember <laughs> it's coming dude it's coming all right okay. <laughs> this is being recorded guys let me yeah. let me just grab the youtube link if you're not already part of the lab code agents youtube channel please subscribe and when i put the link up there do two things besides subscribing i need you to click on that little bell so that every time we upload a video you're notified by email and let me put that up right there in the chat box uh, here we go. All right. There you go, buddy. All right, bro. Well, uh, we're almost out of time. So thank you very much, Tristan. And um, guys, if you, again, if you have any questions, uh, you can reach out to me d d directly or you can text leverage to receive copies of the slides. Um, you know, or if you want to start, uh, you know, what you would like to interview some of the virtual desk assistants, uh, you can again text leverage and, uh, you know, but also you can go to myvirtuedesk.com and uh, schedule a demo call and we'll be happy to take care of you. I love it, man. Thank you so much. And everybody that was on here will receive the slides as well. Uh, Pablo, I'll email you the breakdown of everybody who registered just in case they missed right. it. We'll also yeah, yeah. It, all right. Yeah. We'll send them out to them. Yes. Thanks everybody. Have an awesome day. Thanks, Pablo. All right. Thank you. Bye.